So let's look at the following example. A 2 kg mass oscillates under simple harmonic motion according to the following equation. X of t is equal to 0.7 times cosine of a t, where x of t is simply our position of our object during its oscillation pathway at some arbitrary time t. So if we plug in a time t, it will give us the position of our object in meters. So using this information, we'd like to calculate in part A the amplitude of our oscillation. Well, recall the general equation of our position function. So x of t is equal to a times cosine of omega t times our phi, where phi is simply our phase angle, omega is simply our angular frequency, and A is the maximum displacement. So the A gives us our amplitude of oscillation. So that means if we look at this equation that is given to us, the corresponding A is 0.7. So the amplitude is equal to 0.7 meters. Now let's move on to part B. Determine the period of our oscillation. In other words, how long does it take our object to complete one full cycle, one full oscillation? Now, recall the relationship between the angular frequency and the frequency. So angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. And because frequency is equal to 1 divided by period, that means omega, our angular frequency, is equal to 2 pi divided by our period t. So if we rearrange this equation and solve for t, we get the period is equal to 2 pi divided by our omega. Now, what exactly is our omega? Well, if we go back to part A and we look at our general formula, the omega is simply the value right next to our t term. So we go to this given equation and we see that our omega is simply 8. Now, notice our phi is 0. So we use this omega and we get 2 pi divided by 8 radians per second and we see that our period is pi divided by 4 seconds. So it takes this many seconds to complete one full cycle, one full oscillation. Let's move on to part C. Determine the total energy of our oscillating object when it's undergoing simple harmonic motion. Recall the following equation. Our total energy E is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy as well as the elastic potential energy. Now, this formula is also equal to 1 half Ka squared, where A is our amplitude. Now, recall when our object is found at the amplitude, its kinetic energy is zero. And that's why we have this equation. Now, this is also equal to 1 half mv max squared. Now, this simply states that our object is found at equilibrium. When the object is at equilibrium, it has no elastic potential energy because at displacement, our x is zero. So, we would like to use one of these equations to help us calculate what E is. So we're going to use this equation. So we know what A is, what we need to find K, our stiffness constant. If we find K, we can solve for E. Now recall what the relationship is between K and our mass as well as our omega, the angular frequency. So K divided by M is equal to our angular frequency squared. And if we solve for k, we get the following result. Mass times our angular frequency squared. So we take this quantity and replace it, plug it into the k, and we get the following result. Our E, the total energy of our oscillating object, is equal to 1 half times mass times our angular frequency squared multiplied by a squared, where a is simply our amplitude. So, we know that mass is 2 kilograms, we know that our omega is 8, we know that our A is 0.7 meters, so we plug those values in and we get 31.36 joules of energy is found in our oscillating object.
So note that as long as we have no friction in our system, our object is moving along a horizontal frictionless surface, this quantity remains constant. Now, let's move on to part D. Find the velocity of our oscillating mass at x equals 0.2 meters. So there are different ways that we can solve this part. We're going to use the following formula. So we're going to use these two equations. So this equation is equal to this equation. Now, if we have this result, we can solve for our v, and we get the following equation. v is equal to the square root of the product of the ratio of k divided by m and the difference in the two squares. So a squared minus x squared, where a squared is simply our amplitude squared, 0.7 squared, and x squared is simply our 0.2 squared. Now, note we still don't know what k is, but also note that k divided by m, this quantity is the same thing as omega squared. So instead of having k divided by m, we'll replace that with our omega squared because we know what omega is. So, we plug in our omega, our omega is simply 8, so 8 times 8 is 64, multiplied by 0.7 squared is 0.49, and 0.2 squared is 0.04. So we subtract these two quantities, we get 0.45, and we multiply it by 64, take the square root, and we get 5.4 meters per second is our velocity of the object, when the object is found at a position of 0.2 meters from the equilibrium point.